fellow students, how are you? I hope you're still fine and keeping safe. And on top of that, respecting your parents, which is really an important thing. So this is teacher Hilda, again, your literature teacher for senior six. So I want you to get ready with your notebooks and pens so that we can study. Remember, in our lessons, we are looking at Animal Farm by George Orwell. Animal Farm by George Orwell. So I want you to get ready. And before we start, I want to remind you that this program is brought to you by the Rwanda Education Board in partnership with MasterCard Foundation and IEE Rwanda. So in our previous lessons, we have been summarizing chapters. We summarized chapter one, we summarized chapter two, we summarized chapter three up to chapter seven. So today we are going to summarize chapter eight. But before we do that, I want us to remind ourselves what was in the previous chapters. But let us majorly focus on what was in the last three chapters, that is chapter seven, six, and five, okay? So in chapter five, uh, we see that Clover confronts Molly about her, her lack of work ethics, okay? Uh, she confronts her for lacking work ethics. And soon after that, Molly disappears. So Snowball and Napoleon uh, have become bitter rivals and they now hate each other. They don't like each other. Uh, in chapter 6, we looked at uh, the animals working very hard for in entirely for four year. So the animals have enough food that can last them th throughout summer, but would have to work hard to have surplus for to have surplus for winter. So in chapter seven, that is January, food was really low on the farm. Napoleon made a deal with Mr. Wimper uh, that he would give him 400 eggs in return for grain and food until uh, summer came. So the animals believed that Snowball uh, snuck into the farm at night and caused mischief on the farm. Uh, one night at a meeting, the dogs attacked the four pigs and ripped their throats out. They killed everybody who was affiliated with Snowball's rebellion. From Snowball's rebellion, Napoleon including the hens, uh, three ships and others. So today we are going to look at chapter 8. We are going to focus on chapter 8. So in chapter 8, after a few days later, some animals think they remember that, that the six commandments say that animals shouldn't kill other animals. Uh, nobody says anything at the pigs for all the dogs, but Clover feels that the executions aren't in line with the rule. So she asks Benjamin to read her the commandments, but uh, he refuses, so Morel reads instead. The commandments read, uh, no animal shall kill any other animal without cause. She sees that the commandment was violated. So uh, the animals work harder than ever. So the windmill, in addition to regular farm work, means they sometimes wonder if they work harder now than they did for Mr. Jones, but um, possibly for less food. So on Sunday mornings, uh, Squiller reads lists of figures that prove production is up by at least 200% and um, sometimes up by 500%. Uh, the animals don't question this, especially uh, since many don't remember clearly how things were before. But they also think some days that they would rather have more food and less of the figures. Yeah, instead of telling them the figures of what amount of food they have, they instead want uh, that they must have enough food and that's it for them. So Napoleon is now seldom seen in public. He never goes out without the dogs. And now a black roster that uh, marches ahead and uh, trumpets. So in the farmhouse, he lives alone and eats off of the Crown Derby dinner service. So Squilla and the other pigs relay his messages and it's decided that the farm will fire the gun on Napoleon's birthday. So these days, uh, Napoleon is referred to as our leader, comrade Napoleon. So, and the pigs refer to him as father of all animals, protector of the sheepfold, and other such titles. So animals credit Napoleon for everything, from good laying grates to the clean water. Amin must impresses these feelings in the poem which reads that Napoleon cares for everyone and everyone is faithful to Napoleon. So Napoleon asks Skula to paint it on the big barn next to the portrait of him. So Napoleon busies himself negotiating with Mr. Frederick and Mr. Pilkington about the timber. And Mr. Frederick wants it badly. 
but he, he won't offer a good price. And rumors still circulate that he wants to attack animal farm and destroy the windmill. So Pinchfield supposedly still houses Snowball too. And in the summer, three hens confess that Snowball inspired them to try to murder Napoleon. Uh, after their execution, Napoleon begins sleeping guarded by dogs and appoints a pig <laughs> to test his food for poison. Uh, Napoleon eventually agrees to sell the timber to Mr. Pilkington and enters into an agreement to trade regularly with him. As the windmill's completion approaches, rumors of an impending attack from Mr. Frederick grow stronger, and rumors such late uh, of all the cruel things Mr. Frederick does to his animals. So one Sunday, Napoleon announces that he never considered selling the timber to such a horrible human as Mr. Frederick. So he commands the pigeons to leave a foxwood alone and also to spread the slug on death to Frederick. So later in summer, the animals discover that uh, with the help of a goose, Snowball mixed <laughs> the wheat and corn seed with weeds. So the goose commits suicide and the animals learn that Snowball never received animal hero first class. Rather, he was punished for cowardice after the battle of cowshed and made up the story of the owner to make himself look better. So Squiller convinces everyone that their memories were faulty. So the animals finish the windmill in the fall, though Mr. Wimper is still in process of negotiating for the machinery. Uh, the animals are tired and proud of their work, and they think of what the windmill will be able to do for them. So Napoleon announces that they will name the windmill Napoleon Mill. Hmm? So two days later, Napoleon announces that he sold uh, timber to Mr. Frederick. So he changes the pigeon's message to death to Pilkington. So now, since he, he sold the timber to Frederick, now the message the pigeons have to spread is death uh, to Pilkington. Because he says that they have changed this because the rumors that have been spreading about Mr. Frederick are not true, are false, and insists that Snowball is living in luxury at Foxwood, which is owned by Pilkington. So the pigs are thrilled. As Napoleon's dealings made Mr. Frederick raise his price by uh, 12, dollar, 12 pounds uh, to be paid in cash. So the money will buy the machinery for the windmill. So Mr. Frederick's man cut away the timber quickly and when it is gone, the animals gathered reverently inspect the banknotes. So three days later, Mr. Wimper arrives with horrible news. Banknotes are forgeries. The banknotes that Mr. Frederick used to pay for the timber are forgeries. So Napoleon immediately sentences Mr. Frederick to death and warns that Pinchfield might attack Animal Farm. So he also sends pigeons to Foxwood uh, with nice messages. The next morning, Mr. Frederick's men attack. There are 15 men with guns and the animals cannot stand up to the bullets. So they are forced to hide and even Napoleon looks nervous. Uh, the pigeons return with a note from Mr. Pilkington reading, serves you right. Mr. Frederick and his men gather around the windmill. Uh, at first it looks like they are going to try to knock it down, but Benjamin nods in amusement and notes that they are going to blow it up. He's right. After defending explosion, the windmill is gone. Uh, the enraged animals charge. Boxer kills three men and the dogs bite and uh, terrify the rest. The animals win, but they are bloody and tired. Uh, they gather around the windmill's uh, foundation and note that they won't even be able to reuse the stones. A squealer skips up to them looking satisfied as the guns boom in the distance. So squealer cries that uh, it is to celebrate their victory. A boxer points out that this wasn't a victory since the men destroyed the windmill. Uh, he insists that they just won back what they had before, which Squilla says is a victory. So at the barnyard, Boxer feels the pellets in his legs and begins to mentally prepare himself to rebuild the windmill. It occurs to him that he's 11 now and maybe isn't as strong as he once was. However, when he and the other animals see their flag, hear the gun and listen to Napoleon's speech, they all agree that this was a great victory. 
So they saw only uh, bury the killed animals named the Battle of the Windmill. And Napoleon confers the new order of the Green Banner to himself. So everyone forgets the forged banknotes. So a few days later, the pigs discover a case of whiskey. That particular night, the animals hear very loud music, very loud singing and sounds suspiciously like the beasts of England coming from the farmhouse. And Napoleon gallops around the yard in Mr. Jones' hut. So in the morning, Squiller is the first to emerge at 9 a.m. He announces that Napoleon is dying because Noble poisoned his food. Uh, Squiller says that Napoleon's final uh, pronouncement that drinking alcohol is, is punishable by death. So by the next afternoon, Napoleon is entirely well and asks Mr. Wimper to purchase books on brewing and distilling and orders that the pasture for retired animals should be planted with barley. At about midnight, the animals wake to a crash. They discover a broken ladder by the seven commandments along with Squiller, who is stunned on the ground next to a lantern, paintbrush, and white paint. The dog surrounds Squiller and escort him back to the farmhouse. So no one but Benjamin seems to understand anything. A few days later, Morel says that the commandments that she thought forbade drinking alcohol actually forbids alcohol to excess. They initially forbid drinking alcohol, but now you can, you know, drink alcohol, but not, but not that much. So that is it all about uh, chapter eight. I want us to analyze this chapter, chapter 8. Benjamin's refusal to read the commandments eh, when it seems he's the only one who understands anything uh, continues to situate him as someone who enables the pigs rule by keeping silent. Clover, on the other hand, doesn't have the education or the, the suspicion of her leaders to recognize that the commandments were changed. So what the narrator says would suggest that life is actually worse now than it was under Mr. Jones, which makes Quiller's figures uh, look especially silly. Eh? So if there really was 500% more food, the animals would be so hungry. Instead, Squiller figures a way for him to look powerful and knowledgeable, all the while feeding the workers uplifting lies about how great things are. So everything that Napoleon asks for and begins to do in this passage continues to situate him as a totalitarian leader. So in power, because he works hard and strategically to cultivate a cult of personality that reverses him above all else and gives him uh, the credit for everything good happening on Animal Farm. Uh, true or not, whether he's taking part in it or not, he still wants to take credit for everything good that is happening on the, on the farm. That animals revere Napoleon so much speaks to his success in his endeavor. Well, Min Mas's poem and Squiller's portrait mirror the role that portraits like these have played in totalitarian regime worldwide, from Chairman Mao in China to Hitler in Nazi, that is German. So these negotiations continue to parallel Stalin's dealing with uh, both allies and Hitler during uh, the eve and early days of World War II. So Napoleon's increasing paranoia speaks to, to how he realizes his position is and suggests that no matter what kind of rumors he may circulate about either Mr. Frederick or Mr. Pilkington, he suspects that either of them might have the power to take over animal farm. So this then makes it necessary to convince the animals that they can't trust anyone but Napoleon so that they won't help uh, out him in a possible invasion, uh, continuing to make Snowball the evil henchman responsible for every evil on animal farm makes Napoleon's hold in power even stronger, as he's then able to position himself as the one who got rid of Snowball and gave the farm stability. Again, Squiller is able to convince the animals that they didn't remember correctly because the animals won't have much education to draw on and they work too hard to be able to put much effort into their minds at all. So there is no real way to verify if any of Napoleon's dealings worked the way he and his cronies insist they did, but though the animals may be shocked, they also have nothing to do 
but accept Napoleon's words as facts, given how tight and scary his control over the farm is. So making the deal with Mr. Frederick is a reference to non-aggression pact that Stalin signed with Hitler, which saying that Hitler wouldn't attack the USSR, something that Hitler promptly went on to do. Remember, Napoleon says he's not going to sell timber to Mr. Frederick. Why? Because he thinks rumors spread that Mr. Frederick is going to attack a mole farm. And then he later sells the timber and gives a reason that he has sold the timber because the rumors that were spreading were untrue. And then he, they come to later realize that the banknotes are forgeries. They are not the actual money. So the attack by Mr. Frederick and his men parallels the opening of the Eastern Front of World War II in which Hitler's armies began to invade the USSR and within months were within 40 miles of the capital city of Moscow. So Stalin's men were unable to effectively fight back and the allies were understandably unwilling to work with Stalin after he signed a non-aggression pact with Hitler. So the destruction of the windmill and the animals ensuing victory continues to parallel the German occupation of the Soviet Union. So though the Soviet forces did eventually emerge victorious, notice that the animals, the ones who actually did hard work eh, of fighting off the armed men, have a far more realistic view of what happened and what will happen going forward. So Squiller, however, has to spin this to look like a grand victory, as that's the only way to lift spirits and trick the animals into thinking that this is far more meaningful than they suspect it is. Pay attention to the way that the celebrations bring the animals around to Squiller and Napoleon's way of thinking. This makes it clear that the purpose of these celebratory exercises is to remind the lower class what exactly they were fighting for, the state, and uh, distract from whatever injuries illness or other wrongs they were suffering at the hands of the state. The pigs mistake Napoleon's hangover for death shows clearly how unprepared the pigs are to be members of a human world. Even though they are clearly headed in that direction, uh, given their discovery of alcohol and Napoleon's giant Mr. John's hat, uh, which, remember, is a piece of clothing that was forbidden. So reallocating the retirement pasture to alcohol production shows that Napoleon is more than willing to do things that help him at the expense of those who have, for the most part, served him like he's selfish. This is the first and only real proof that the reader ever gets that uh, the pigs are tampering with the commandments. When the animals cannot figure out what's going on, it shows that they are entirely royal to Napoleon and his rule and cannot phantom uh, that the person leading them could possibly want to hurt him. That would, after all, be against the seven commandments. So I want us to, to write down these questions and answer them maybe later. The first one is, in what ways do the pigs use the other animals' illiteracy? In what ways do the pigs use the other animals' illiteracy and lack of intelligence to keep the animals from rebelling against the pigs? In what ways do the pigs use the other animals' illiteracy, the other animals' illiteracy and lack of intelligence and lack of intelligence to keep the animals from rebelling against the pigs? To keep the animals from rebelling against the against the pigs. So our second question, in what ways is Napoleon treated like a very special animal? In what ways is Napoleon treated like a very special animal? Question mark and the continuation, why do the pigs want Napoleon to be considered special? Why do the pigs want Napoleon to be considered special? Okay, I want you to, to try and answer those questions. We shall look at their answers in our next lesson. But however, there are some quotes that caught my eyes in chapter 8 that I want us to discuss. I actually want us to discuss like two quotes. Uh, the first one reads, 
At the foot of the end of the barn, where the seven commandments were written, there lay a ladder uh, broken into pieces. Squilla, temporarily stunned, was prowling beside it, and near at the hand there lay a lantern, a paintbrush, and an overturned pot of white paint. None of the animals would form any idea as to what this meant, except old Benjamin, who nodded in muzzle with an knowing air and seemed to understand, but would say nothing. So uh, the, the main characters in this quote is Benjamin and Squilla. Uh, you can find this on page 108 to 109. So... Let me try to explain this. After the, the pigs begin to consume alcohol, Squilla is discovered modifying the commandments to sanction their behavior. So, though most of the animals are unable to make sense of the event, the skeptic Benjamin is unsurprised by what he sees. So, the novel has previously implied that the pigs were modifying the commandments. But here, their actions become fully conspicuous. Not only does Squilla reinterpret the laws with clever propaganda, but he also literally rewrites them to suit the whims of the pigs. What is more surprising about this passage, however, is how the animals are unable to make sense of the event. So Orwell paints out how, even when confronted with clear evidence of political malpractice, a populace will not necessarily be able to make sense of it or agree to do anything about it. Due perhaps to exhaustion, lack of education, or simply fear, the animals are still unable to challenge the leaders. Benjamin's character might seem to offer a source of insight, for from the beginning he has been skeptical and observant of the pig's action, yet uh, his passivity and unwillingness to share his opinions render him fundamentally ineffective, thus pointing out that knowledge of corruption does not necessarily lead to changing it. I think let us only look at that quote, and that is it all about our chapter 8. If you have something to add on, you can uh, tell us, you can share with us, uh, share with a friend. I want to thank you for paying attention. Thanks for being good students. Keep safe until we meet again. Bye. Goodbye, 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 teacher. Goodbye, children. See you next time. Goodbye, 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 teacher. Goodbye, children. See you next time.